Hi, I'm Eric Summerer, and here's what's coming from the Dice Tower this week. Hey folks, welcome to the news for July 9th, 2013. Uh, this is a day late and a dollar short, uh, mostly because of the Dice Tower convention. We were still coming back from it yesterday, which is why I didn't have a chance to get it up. The Dice Tower convention was, in short, a fantastic experience. The best convention I've ever been to of all the ones I've been. It was just amazing. But I'll talk more about that in our next news segment. Uh, today I want to talk about something very specific to what just happened uh, with the Dice Tower Awards. Now there was a lot of other news in the gaming world, specifically the Spiel des Jahres nominees were announced, or the winner was announced, which was a really big deal. Hanabi won, which I was surprised at because I didn't think a game with a small box like that would win, but it did win. And after seeing how many people were playing and enjoying it at the Dice Tower convention, that's, that, that, that's an excellent choice and I'm glad that it did well. And also Legends of Andor won the Kenner Spiel, which is kind of like the award for the more advanced game. And Legends of Andor is a very good cooperative game. So congratulations to both of those winners. Now, the Dice Tower Awards themselves, like I said, what we did is we announced them at a live show that we did uh, this past Saturday at 2 o'clock. And obviously the word is out there. People twittered about it. Cool stuff posted a list of them. And so it's not like they're exactly secret. You can go to our website right now at dicetower.com and you can look at the just amazing uh, selection of nominees that there were and then which games won. And also we posted, I told you we recorded that live show on Saturday. Well, that show is posted so you can listen to it and hear the winners of the Dice Tower Awards as we have, we and our friends uh, at the convention come and talk about them. But just in case you missed all that, let me quickly run through the winners and the runners up for each of the categories. So we have our theme. I'm always looking for a great theme in a game. And CO2 was the runner up there with the anti-pollution theme, but Mice and Mystics was the winner. For War Games, 1989 from GMT Games was the runner up, but the winner was 1812, the invasion of Canada. For Artwork Seasons was the runner up from Asmodee, but the winner was Mice and Mystics. For innovative games, Escape from Queen Games was the runner-up, but Space Cadets from Stronghold Games was the winner. For expansion, Power Up for King of Tokyo was the runner-up, while the new expansion for Core Worlds was the winner. For Party Game, the runner-up was from North Star Games, Wits and Wagers Party, uh, while the winner was Love Letter. For Small Publisher, the runner-up was Mage Wars from Arcane Wonders, while the winner was Mice and Mystics. For Production Quality, the runner-up was Mice and Mystics, while the winner was the X-Wing Miniatures. For reprints, the runner-up was Sentinels of the Multiverse from Greater Than Games, while the winner was Android Netrunner. For Best New Designer, which goes to a designer who published our first or second game, uh, the runner-up was Mice and Mystics, while the winner was Space Cadets. For Best Family Game, the runner-up was Lords of Waterdeep, while the winner was Love Letter. For Game of the Year, the biggest one of all, the runner-up was Mage Wars, while the winner was the X-Wing Miniatures game. Now, since the awards were already leaked and a lot of people have been uh, contemplating and talking about them on the internet, and so I thought I would stick in a little bit of my own two cents here. Uh, there's a lot of different things. One of the things that we uh, I wanted to make clear was that one of the purposes of these awards was to get more people talking about these games, to get more people involved in these games. So I'm certainly not opposed to people getting online and telling us how idiotic our choices were. Uh, that comes with the territory. I certainly say that about other gaming awards. So I fully expect people to say that about ours. And if you completely disagree with our choices, then so be it. Let me quick give you a rundown of how the choices work because I think there's a few people who think that these are my choices and, and they are not. If you want to know my choices, usually you can go and look at, at the end of the 2012, I do the top 10 games of 2012. So those are my choices for the best games, and I even pick different categories. And then five years later, I'll revisit and do that again from a five-year perspective. And so some things will change, but mostly, you know, that's my opinion. I think awards should be better than just one person's opinion. And so I've enlisted the help of other podcasters and, and video bloggers and reviewers and just very involved gamers to be involved with this. And so what we do is we nominate the games. And after that process, everybody sends me their uh, votes and I compile them here, uh, writing down the different uh, numbers. And I go back and I double check it because it's very important that I get it right. 
and I don't even actually vote unless it's a tie, in which that did not happen this year, and then I would break the tie um, to, to see who won these awards. So they're not my personal choices. In fact, my personal choices are, are a bit different here. But we're not here, like I said, to give you my personal choices. We're here to give you a great slate of games. And again, you will likely disagree. I can't imagine anybody who would agree on all the awards, and that's fine because that's one of the purposes of the awards themselves. Um, so go ahead, argue about them, and, and say what you want. But like I said, I did want to clarify how the process works. Now, a lot of people were, uh, there was some arguments over how our awards have failed and fallen. And, and that one I will argue with you about. Of course, we will probably tend to disagree. But I think the choice for especially Game of the Year was one that I think was very well done. Was it my pick for Game of the Year? It wasn't actually. It wasn't even in my top three. But I cannot argue with it because X-Wing Miniatures has done that well. If you go to Board Game Geek and look at the top ranked games from 2012, X-Wing Miniatures is very high up there. Um, some people were wondering what we based it on. We looked at the game that was released when X-Wing Miniatures was released. They released it at the same time as uh, I think four, yeah, four other ships were released at the same time. So that was pretty much all the same game system there. Now, I was surprised anyone else that a miniatures game won our best tabletop game of the year award, but I don't care because the game was that fun. I've seen people play it who were not Star Wars fans and really get into it because of the ease and simplicity of the system. I am not a miniatures person. I do not play miniatures games, and I yet still play this one. Sure, it has a Star Wars theme, and good on them for being able to take that theme and bring it to the table and so many other games that were based on different themes like Star Trek and, and other Star Wars games in the past have not done as well and did not win the award. So I will stand by this. Again, I certainly expect people to disagree with it, but I think that it's a choice that's going to appeal to a lot of people. And I'm not opposed to a controversial choice. My only cr criteria is I didn't want a choice up there where people, everybody said, what, really? That, that's not even in the top 10 games of the year. Well, it is. It is a great game. It is a game that's deserving of winning game of the year. It had a shot. It was one of the top 10 and it made it. So congratulations to that. But again, I, I will jovially disagree with you. Now where I will not jovially disagree with you and I will come down very hard are for those people out there who will try to blast our names. If you're out there and you're one of those folks who say that this is a situation where we are giving awards to our friends. Well, first of all, on one hand, you're right. We are giving awards to our friends because, folks, we're friends with almost everybody in the gaming industry. I don't see how we can avoid that, and I don't want to avoid that. I like knowing all the designers. I like knowing the different publishers. Um, take, for example, let's just pick a category here um, in the artwork category. Now, the winner for the artwork category was Mice and Mystics. And yes, I'm friends with Colby from Plat Hat Games. And from Seasons, I am really good friends with the Asmo Day guys. And Legendary, I've spent a lot of time with the Upper Deck guys and really enjoy getting along with them. And with Smash Up, uh, I've had many good times hanging out with the AEG folks. And then Libertalia is Asmo Day again. So to, to, to think that we are just picking people based on our friends is not only idiotic, but it is a downright lie, and I'll call it out on that. Not to mention, again, I'm only one of 40 people, so there's lots of people. I wouldn't even let the folks who were directly involved in the different companies vote in their categories that they were nominated for so that we could avoid any sorts of impropriety. Now, people are still going to accuse us of that, but I'm telling you right now, you're lying. So, nothing I can do about that. So, anyhow... Those are the awards. Those are the different things. There are many games that didn't make it in. Some people say, well, why didn't such and such a game make it in? Well, for one thing, it wasn't nominated. Possibly it didn't have a wide release. And we honestly cannot get out there and play every single game. And at the same time, I would be kind of hesitant to pick a game that maybe there's only 100 copies of in the world and say that was game of the year because then nobody could go out and buy it. And it would seem kind of a waste in that regard. But, all right. Uh, other people wanted to know why we have different categories involved, you know, why do you have war games and party games, but you don't have card games and you don't have these style games. Well, each year we talk about the new categories that we may or may not add and we may drop categories like, for example, this year we dropped the digital category because it was just too difficult to work with. We couldn't decide what games counted as a board game and what games didn't count, what platforms did we count, you know, did what 
when exactly did a digital game, if it came out for the Android one year and the Xbox the next year, which year did we count it for? There were so many confusing questions that we, we, we thought it best to leave that one alone. And that may happen with awards in the future, but we may also add other ones. Just say, for example, card game, best card game. We, we, we thought about it and then we thought it would be too difficult to define exactly what a card game is. If the game is the game 50% cards, is it 70% cards? So we have not added that one for that reason. But you may see other awards added in the future, and I, and, I, and, I, and I certainly would not be opposed to it. Finally, there's this. Do you not like the way we do the Dice Tower Awards? Do you think we do a horrible job at voting and that no one nominated your favorite games? Well, join us. This isn't a secret club. This isn't a, a club. If you are somebody who plays a lot of games over the year, I'm not looking for some... I'm not looking for people to play just a few. I want people who play a lot because then you have a wide breadth of experience. But if you play a lot of games over the course of the year and you would be in, interested in joining the Dice Tower Awards, then you email me at tomvassell at gmail.com and you let me know that and I will add you in. We will certainly be glad to have you on board and join us and have a chance to talk about your favorite games. And that way you can see the process for yourself. This isn't an exclusive club, although it is one where, again, I want people to know what they're talking about. But I would love to see the 2013 awards, 14 awards, be greater, be better, and have a wide uh, ex breadth of experience. Well, there's that. My voice is almost gone from Dice Tower Convention. Hopefully, we'll be back soon. We got some great stuff coming for you this week, folks. Two two top 10 lists. Um, one I think you will enjoy and another one I think you will throw things at the uh, at your monitor when you watch it. Um, and maybe you'll see a couple of reviews from us, but until next time, I'm Tom Vassell and you've been watching The Dice Tower. To find out more about all of our podcasts, check out Dicetowernetwork.com. To see a listing of our videos, head to Dicetower.com. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Cool Stuff Incorporated, where you can buy games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Shut the door!